Hello and welcome to WVU Medicine Tuesday Talks. I'm your host, Mary Ravazio Menard. Vascular anomalies are birthmarks or growths made up of blood vessels that have developed incorrectly. They can cause functional or cosmetic problems and affect about 1 in 22 children. What causes vascular anomalies and how are they treated? We'll answer those questions and more as today we're talking with Dr. Zachary Zinn, a pediatric dermatologist at the WVU Medicine Children's Vascular Anomalies Clinic. Welcome Dr. Zinn to Tuesday Talks. Thanks for having me. It's good to have you here. If you have any vascular anomaly questions, just submit them in the comment section below and we'll try to answer them live. Okay, now Dr. Zinn, I have to admit the first time I heard the word vascular anomaly, I had no idea what that was. Sure. So let's start there and make it simple for us. <laughs> okay. Well, you're not alone. A lot of people don't know what they are. Um, vascular anomalies in general are disorders of blood vessels. And we break them into two main categories. Uh, one would be vascular tumors. And people know what tumors are. Those are things that can grow. Mm -hmm. And the other category is vascular malformations and malformations are um, disorders of blood vessels that you're born with. We typically divide those into the type of blood vessel that makes up the malformation. So if it's mostly made of capillaries, we call it a capillary malformation. If it's made of veins, it's a venous malformation. And so you can usually see these? Some are visible. So the, a common vascular tumor called a hemangioma is visible to the naked eye and you can see it on the skin typically. Um, some vascular malformations are deeper in the body. They can be deeper in the skin, they can be in the muscles, the bones, or even oh, wow. in your organs. Oh, okay. So what are the most common vascular tumors? So the most common vascular tumor by far is the infantile hemangioma. That's what a lot of people might know better as a strawberry hemangioma. And okay. many people know someone, you know, a family member, a friend who's been born with a strawberry hemangioma. That's a birthmark. That's a birthmark, yeah. And they're usually present at birth, although sometimes they appear in the first couple months of life. And then after they appear, they tend to grow quickly. And that's usually when we get involved with their treatment is when they're growing. Yeah, um, so can those tumors be harmful then? They can, they can be harmful in a couple ways. Um, thankfully, most hemangiomas grow and don't cause any problems, um, but they can cause cosmetic impairment they can ulcerate, and that's when the skin over top of them breaks down and causes a sore. Oh. Um, or they can cause functional impairment. Um, an example of that would be someone with a hemangioma by their eye that's growing quickly and it's oh. compressing and affecting their vision. Um, and these are typically um, present in infants, and that's when you know eye development, other yeah. you know body function developments, paramount. So we try to treat them to prevent complications. And and you mentioned before that. You can see them usually, but there are some that you can't see. I mean, how do you know you have one if you can't see it? Sure. Mm -hmm. Well, the ones that you can see are typically hemangiomas, which I've mentioned multiple times because they're the most common vascular and they, tumor. And they look like a strawberry. Is that why they they're called? They tend to look bright red. Um, they're bright red vascular plaques, although sometimes they can be deeper in the skin and can kind of have a bluish hue. But other vascular malformations, um, malformations, again, are the disorders of blood vessels. Mm -hmm. um, you might not see those on the skin. Those can be in the muscle, in the bones, um, and those can present with pain, with difficulty doing daily functions, with swelling. Um, sometimes they do have some discoloration on the skin as well. So those sound more serious than, than just a cosmetic thing. They're definitely more serious than a cosmetic thing. Um, in fact, they can significantly impair people's quality of life. Um, and so that's why, you know, a team-based approach to treat these things is, is so important because um, it's not just myself as a dermatologist, it's all these other specialists who are involved in vascular anomalies that really put their heads together to treat these complex conditions. Okay, so how do you, um, how do you diagnose these? I mean, if you can't see them. Yeah. <laughs> are there signs and symptoms? Yeah, typically, so for another common um, vascular malformation, one that's called a capillary malformation, or commonly called a port wine stain, mm -hmm. you can usually see those because they're present at birth. And they're just a clinical diagnosis. You can clearly tell that somebody has um, this reddish purple discoloration on their skin. 
Um, so that one's just a clinical diagnosis. Others, though, that are deeper, um, they may require radiology to diagnose, and typically we'll do MRI um, studies, although sometimes things like x-rays and CT scans are needed as well. And sometimes even more um, complex interventional studies are needed to be done um, where they actually look at the vessels um, by an interventional radiologist. So, you know, before you would go to do those tests, are there some type of sign or symptom that, you know, you have something going on in the bone or in the muscle? Yeah. So if somebody has, for example, a vascular malformation in their leg, mm -hmm. say a venous or a lymphatic malformation, usually that leg will have some overgrowth so it will be a little bit larger than the other leg. Oh, okay. um, oftentimes there's some discoloration on the surface that can look vascular, so it can look kind of reddish, purple or blue, and then frequently there's pain associated as well. Mm -hmm. So it's those combination of things that can clue you in that there's a, a deeper vascular malformation in the skin. And these usually occur in, in babies and young children, right? Yeah, they do, but in our vascular anomalies clinic, although we primarily treat kids, we do treat some adults as well, and that's because some vascular malformations don't become apparent until later in life, oh, okay. although the majority are treated in childhood, and that's why most of our patients tend to be children. And a lot of times when they're still so young, they can't tell you this hurts or something's wrong. Exactly. And that's why we have a really um, robust referral base because a lot of our patients are sent to us by their pediatricians who see something and suspect something is um, not developing exactly correctly. And so they'll um, think that maybe this is a vascular issue and send patients to our vascular anomalies clinic. So what causes these, these vascular anomalies? That's what's so exciting about our clinic. If you had asked me that question 20 years ago, I wouldn't have had a good answer for you. Uh, but now we know the genetic cause of most of these vascular malformations and a lot of these vascular tumors, and that actually allows us to target therapy at huh. the genetic mutation. So if somebody comes in with a venous malformation or a lymphatic malformation now, we know that there are some common genetic mutations causing it, and we have hmm. treatments that specifically target those genetic changes. Oh, wow. That is exciting. Yeah, it's very exciting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, are most vascular anomalies harmful? Thankfully, most are more benign. Um, again, I keep going back to the hemangioma because that is the most common one. Mm -hmm. Most people who have those don't require any treatment. You know, if you have a hemangioma growing on your back as an infant, you know, it grows for the first year of life and then it plateaus, and then it slowly shrinks, and then it doesn't require treatment. So we're treating the complicated ones that do require treatment, and most vascular malformations do require treatment at some point. Okay, so is a hemangioma a, uh, a malformation or a tumor, or can it be both? A hemangioma mm -hmm. is classified under the vascular tumor okay. classification scheme. The malformations are more, you can think of them as disorganized um, growths of blood vessels. So everybody has veins, mm -hmm. everybody has lymphatic vessels, and everybody mm -hmm. has capillaries. But what a malformation is, is when you get a disorganized cluster of those vessels. So we have veins in our arm, but we shouldn't have a big cluster of veins, you know, yeah. that aren't mm -hmm. really working well in our arm. And that's when we call it a vascular malformation. So what are the most common um, vascular malformations? So the port wine stain is very common. Um, thankfully, we have great treatment for that, um, a type of laser called a pulsed dye laser, and we can actually um, remove many port wine stains now, especially really? if we start treatment earlier in life. And as a pediatric dermatologist, I like to see those children really in the first month of life and get started with treatment. Wow, you can treat them that young. Yeah, we treat them very young. We think we can actually um, interrupt some of the blood vessel development if we start the treatment earlier in life. So for port wine stains, we start very early. For venous and lymphatic malformations, you know, most importantly, we wanna do no harm. So sometimes you can have a venous malformation that's asymptomatic. And in kids, you know, we don't wanna be aggressive with treatment if, it's, if the malformation's not causing problems. So sometimes we take a bit of a watchful waiting approach and mm -hmm. then start to treat if it becomes problematic. So how would you treat a venous malformation that was causing some trouble? Yeah, it's a great question. So this is where the team-based approach comes in. So we can use some of those targeted therapies that I talked about, and our vascular anomalies team has a pediatric hematology oncology doctor as part of it, Dr. Tom Bach, who's amazing. Oh, um, yeah. We also sometimes require surgical treatment. 
Um, and we have a wonderful pediatric plastic surgery team with Dr. Brooke and Dr. Uger and Michelle Bidlich. And then we have a complex care pediatrician, Dr. Freeling, to kind of put everything together and manage the uh, complicated nature of these. Um, we also have interventional radiologists. So sometimes these veins need to have what's called sclerotherapy, where you actually inject into the veins. And that would be done by either Dr. Grammer or Dr. Boo, who are interventional radiologists. Mm -hmm. And then finally, we have um, ophthalmology team involved with Dr. Wynn in case anything is near or affecting the eye. And so we, all of the providers in the clinic kind of put their heads together and arrive at a treatment approach that's best for the patient. And you have all of these different experts weighing in, and that's why the patients really get great outcomes. Yeah, you just covered almost every department in the hospital there of that group. <laughs> yeah, and, we're, yeah, and we're all there together. And yeah. that's, that's what makes the clinic so special. Um, prior to seeing the patients, we actually do an hour-long radiology review where we go over all of the patient's imaging. Um, so we do that as a team, and then we see the patients as a team. And the whole thing is a team-based approach. So it sounds like most of these, um, if they're causing problems, can be, can be treated. And, yeah. you know, it's not necessarily going to end not well. Correct. I've seen so many patients who have been told their whole life that there's not treatment, and, and rightfully so many times because there wasn't treatment Back for then. a lot of these things sure. when they were told that. But now we have such good treatment. I mean, we've had people who've had pain their whole life who this painful condition is now better, or they can walk better, or you know they can use their arms better, or the physical appearance has been decreased. And just so many people we've been able to help with this team-based approach. Yeah, yeah. Do you find, is there an awareness issue that you know people don't realize that hey, this can be fixed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think there still is that, and uh, that's why I was really happy to be invited to do this talk because I, mm -hmm. I hope that this will spread awareness about vascular anomalies and know that if you have one of these conditions we've talked about, that we have a lot of treatment options available now um, that might not have been available previously. Okay. So let's talk a little bit more specifically about the Vascular Anomalies Program at WV Medicine Children's. Well, sure. You're part of that. Um, is this the only one in the state? This is certainly the only one with this degree of um, expertise and this number of providers all coming together and working together. And it's been, a, it's been a big hit. I mean, since we established this clinic about five years ago, it's just been full. We've seen really complicated um, medical conditions that require a team-based approach, and we've had a lot of uh, treatment successes along the way. So it's been really rewarding, you know, to be involved with this clinic. And I know you keep mentioning this team approach, but it sounds like we've got a lot of depth on our bench here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we do. I mean, and every patient, you know, not every, so different providers take the lead on different patients. So if we have someone, for example, who comes in with a vascular malformation on the face, say it's around the eye, well, I may be involved with doing laser treatment on that patient. Mm -hmm. um, oculoplastics and ophthalmology may be involved with doing some treatments around the eye. Mm -hmm. um, hematology, oncology may manage the medical aspect of that patient, and so on and so forth. And it's like that with all the, the patients that we see. Um, the, the providers who need to be involved get involved, and sometimes some step forward and some step back, and sometimes everybody needs to be involved. Sure, yeah. sure. Can you talk a little bit about um the expertise at uh, the WVU Medicine Children's, sure. uh, because you don't have to leave the state for this this kind of treatment, right? Yeah, I mean, the exp I, I mentioned all the doctors involved, and you know, many of them are fellowship trained, different areas in the country, and even different areas of the world, um, all bringing their experience together. And no, patients don't need to leave the state. We have the highest level of care for vascular anomalies right here. And I would say not only do people not need to leave the state, we've had many people from other states come to this clinic just because of the level of um, expertise and care that we can provide. And it's right here in our front yard. Yes, <laughs> so we're happy to, happy to have it here. That's, that's, we're lucky to have that, that's for sure. So what's the most important thing you want our viewers to know that are watching about vascular anomalies? I would give a few take home points. So one is that, you know, what are vascular anomalies? They're disorders of blood vessels. Um, we have treatment options for these now, whether it be to improve the cosmetic appearance or to help with the function of day-to-day -day living, um, to decrease pain. Um, 
it really takes a team-based approach to treat these. You know, mm -hmm. not one doctor can really do sclerotherapy, laser, manage the medicines, do surgery, do everything that might be needed. And so um, to get the best care, you need a team-based approach, and we think we have that at uh, WVU Medicine Children's with our, our Vascular Anomalies Program team. Okay, great. Well, thank you for sharing all this uh, really good information here. You don't have to live with the pain. You don't have to, you know. Yeah. Because it's earlier, as always, with everything. Earlier is better, right? Earlier treatment. Yeah, yeah. So if there's, you know, there's probably some um, patients watching, and there could be some providers watching. And basically, um, early referral is better. If you see a, a, a pediatric patient who's got a vascular anomaly, um, early referral to, to at least um, evaluate the patient and determine what the mm -hmm. treatment options are is better. And if you're a patient who has one of these conditions, um, you know, er, being seen earlier is oftentimes better too. There's more treatment options when things are less advanced. Okay, great. Well, again, thank you for joining thank us and so sharing much. this information with us. And uh, good luck. I appreciate yeah. it. Thanks for your time. That brings us to the end of this edition of Tuesday Talks. If you're looking for more information about vascular anomalies and other pediatric dermatology conditions, visit wvukids.com. And join us on Tuesday Talks on June 20th when we'll talk about melanoma with Dr. Alan Tomei, a surgical oncologist with the WVU Cancer Institute. I'm Mary Ravazio Menard, and on behalf of Dr. Zinn and everyone at WVU Medicine, thanks for joining us and have a great day.